Well, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of from that same format, Steve, that, I, that if you're talking about me, then it's okay. The one day you're not talking about me is the one day I'm having problems. But they're in a situation where the guys are talking about the biggest name that they have on their card, the biggest name they're pushing, the biggest name they're putting out there. She only makes $25,000 when she fights, and Gina Carano, that's the biggest name they got. Are you kidding me? And that's all she's making is twenty-five grand. That, that's what, And yes, I know I'm a little biased. I do train with her. I have had her kick me. I have had her punch me. I do get hard she hits. So yeah, I am a little biased when it comes to Gina Carano, but I'm telling you, she's the biggest name they have on there. She's getting twenty-five grand. Then Kimbo, who, who should have been their fifth tier or their sixth tier because they have Jake Shields, who's a ranked 170-pounder. They have Robbie Lala, who's a ranked 185-pounder. And they put Kimbo as the biggest guy on their card, and he's the one that gets knocked down in 14 seconds. He's the one that gets debacled by a guy that really, in Seth Petrozelli, that really couldn't even make it in the UFC at 205 because of the heavyweight and knocks him out in 14 seconds. Did Seth get lucky? No, he hit opportunity, knocked, he opened the door, and he freaking cracked him in the head. I mean, that's what happens. Is it bad? Yeah, yeah. And I have to be honest with you, uh, the statements that are coming out from one of their former employees and Gary Shaw, the statements that are coming out from Jared Shaw, the statements that are coming out from Jeremy Lappin, it, it's, it's all bad. It doesn't, those guys like that need to keep their mouth shut and let the fighters make the mistakes in what they're talking about. But when the upper executives, you keep your mouth shut and you wait till the, wait till the press comes out, you wait until the, the, the uh, uh, different organizations come out and press their charges against you and you defend it that way. But then go out there talking about, yeah, you know, we, we paid our bonus to Seth to keep it on their feet before the fight happened. What do you, so either you're paying for a guy, you're telling him to keep it on their feet, here's a bonus, or you're telling Kimber to take a dive and we're going to pay Seth early. I mean, either way, it's, it's bad press for the sport, let alone Lead XC, and Lead XC just looks bad. Hopefully they can come out of it because we do need another organization to fight, but, man, who knows? So in the end, could this shut them down? Does it mean that CBS and Showtime take over more? And uh, maybe the, the simple solution might be, I hate to say it, but I, I don't think they're awful guys, but Jeremy Lavin and Jared Shaw have to go whether it's proven or not. You know what? I, I do think it's going to be a little bit more with Showtime and CBS taking over a little bit more. And what's going to happen is that, you know, Jeremy Lappin and Jared Shaw aren't going to go anywhere, but their duties are going to get a little bit less, a little bit less. And then pretty soon, I was going to realize, wow, they're like the Queen of England. It's a really nice figurehead position, and they get to run around and run their mouths, but they have no power or any control. So as far as your matchmaking, you know, trying to find elite fights, and we talked to Jay Heron about this too, and, you know, trying to find fights for uh, Jake Shields, you know, mm -hmm. Jake was actually talking a little trash about you the other day. Yeah. Uh, he, saying that, uh, you know, you're the guy who's the, the problem here. You're talking to him. And, so what's the real issue? There is, there is no issue. The only time I ever think about Jake Shields is when you guys asked me about him because he said something else again. I don't. It's nothing against Jake. He's a good fighter. He's a great competitor. He's a 170 pounder. I'm a 185 pounder. We fight in different promotions. I, I, I now honestly, because it's like the fifth or sixth time he's actually said something about me. I think he's got a little man crush because I have not said anything about Jake at all. I don't really care about Jake Shields. Like I said, nothing against him personally. Nothing against him as a fighter. He's just in a different weight class and a different promotion. I don't fight for the promotion. There's no chance of him and I fighting each other. And I'm in a different weight class. So, why does he want to fight me? Why does he always want to fight these bigger guys? He's, I think he's posturing, just trying to make a bigger name for himself because he's not getting the, the, the laurels that he should be getting, that he, at least that he thinks that he should be getting. I mean, you know, why worry about me? Why don't you about, if you really want to fight somebody tough in your weight class, go fight George St. Pierre. Why don't you worry about Diego Sanchez? Hell, why don't you go ahead and, and, and fight BJ Penn? Go ahead, BJ Penn likes to fight bigger guys. Why don't you go ahead and stay at 170 fight BJ Penn? Why you got to bother with trying to fight, you know, Frank Shamrock and Frank Trigg don't want to fight me? Well, Guess what? We really don't care about you. We got our own problems. We're trying to fight each other. Frank and I are trying to fight each other. We don't care about Jake right now. We got our own issues to deal with. So what's on the horizon? Well, I mean, what's most likely? What? And you know, what's the possibility? I, I don't know what you got paid in Denver, but obviously you want a higher profile fights than that. You did a good job there, but can you get yeah. you know another big payday? Working with one of these promotions. You know, here's the problem. All the really good guys are 185 pounds. You know, they're, they're all tied up. If you look at the top 10 guys, you have um, myself, Masaki, and Lawler are basically the three top 10 guys. And depending on which ranking you look at, I'm not even in the top 10 sometimes. It kind of depends how you look at it. We're all tied up. Everyone else is tied up in the UFC. We're in a different promotions. Uh, Lawler's in, in Elite XC. Masaki's now with Strike Force. He's also with World Victory Road, and so it's a weird situation. But Masaki and I've already fought each other. I beat him in a head-to-head -head competition. I really don't need to fight him again because there's nine other guys in the weight class that I haven't fought yet that I could be fighting. Your are your, your, your Rich Franklins, your Dan Hendersons, your Anderson Silvas. I mean, there's so many guys out there that I could be fighting. Why fight another guy that I've already fought? Yet? As a matter of fact, I love to smack John Lewis around as I could. As he passes behind you in the camera, flipping me off. <laughs> how, uh, how possible would it be uh, with this guy, Masasi, who was yep. that, that last name, right? Yep. Um, who just, you know, 
won the Dream Tournament, that'd be a nice matchup. Or do you think Affliction will try to protect him a little bit? You know, I have to be honest with you. Jerome Masasi is not as good as everyone's touting him. He hasn't beat anybody. He wins a tournament, all of a sudden he's pr promoted into the top six or top five of the weight class. It doesn't make any sense. He he beats the Jacare that's had eight fights against nobodies. Uh, Masasi's beat 16 guys that are nobodies. He wins a great tournament. Obviously, fighting two times in one night is very difficult. So you have to give him credit there. But all of a sudden now, he's like the next best thing at, at 185. He can beat Anderson Silva, and he's the guy that's going to knock out Dan Henderson. And he's the guy that's going to. It's just he's untested. Give him a couple more fights. Let's see what he does. There's always a shot. You know, I'm friends with Tom Atencio. There's always a shot that I could be fighting in affliction. There's always a possibility that I could be over there. And there's a possibility then that Gerard Masasi and I could be fighting each other.